tree. Oh, there's Emily. There's Dollar Tree right there. And we're about to get some materials to make our sand and water sensory table. Yes, we are. <laughs> we're gonna get, we're looking for sand, a bin, and some loose parts to put in our sensory table. Yeah. See you in there. So that's like digging tools? These could be little mini sand buckets. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. There's like multiple, so a lot of children can have some. Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna get this spatula for students to dig explore. up the sand, explore yeah. the sand, maybe put it in the water to see what happens. Dirt? Ooh, this could be good for students. I'm just we're just going. Well, should we yeah. do some measuring cups? Oh, yeah. Students can learn measuring. <laughs> yeah, Three things of white sand. We got some rocks. Sifter. A sifter for the sand. Um, we also found some shells. Which we put in this summer. We put in here somewhere. We have so many. What did you find, some Lauren? The grow creatures, and they could observe them. When you submerge them in water, they get really big. So it could take a couple of days and then you could observe them and draw pictures of them. Yeah, and predict what they think, how big they'll be. Yeah. And they're sea creatures, which goes with our theme. So we use this big one and then put the little one in it so we can separate the sand and water and then they can mix it if they want to. Oh, good idea. Bye Dollar Tree. Okay guys, so we got all of our materials and we're gonna share them with you in a little bit, probably when we get to my house. But one thing we wanted to touch on is it can be kind of expensive to do this on your own. So one thing that we suggest is getting a group of either some other teachers that want to do this with you, or if you're a parent, getting some other parents together that are interested in doing at home sensory tables. And so each person can get one. And then the nice thing about that is you can like pass them all around. So your kids, whether they're your students or your child, we'll get like four sensory tables instead of one. And that makes it seem less expensive. Now we're at Brooke's house. We're gonna build the table and show you. And yes. this is her cat. That's this her is cat. Mal. Say hi, Mal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got our stuff. <laughs> we got our stuff. Lauren's gonna start. Okay. We got a sifter, so if they wanna explore in the sand, all like the loose materials, rocks and whatever, they can sift it and look and observe. Gonna do this too. Right. Um, and then we talked about these at the store, but we got the grow fish. And there's a fish, octopus, something. And stingray. then a stingray. And then starf starfish. And they grow in water. So, and it takes a few days. So, they'll probably just like observe and look at them throughout the days. And it'll help with their cognitive ability. Yeah, and then we got these clear like marbles and we were gonna put these in the water. So they can like get a scooper and scoop them out in the water and they're good like texture to add and yeah, they can fish it out. And then we got some shells. They're very natural, expected on the beach. So we'll place these around the sand and they can look at the texture of all of these and observe them. Okay, so I have these little like scoop cup things which they can use in the water or the sand to scoop up the materials. And then we also got like these colored rocks for them to play with which they can scoop up with the sifter or with these. Um, then we got sand, kind of a given, but we got three bags of that. Hopefully it's enough. And then we got these little magnifying glasses which they can use to like make observations of the rocks, of all of the different materials that we have, especially those like growing things. They can like see what's different about them each day. And then this, um, it's like got a shovel and then like a rake and then something that the sand will fall through. Like, I don't, I think you can see it. Yeah. The sand will fall through, but the rocks and stuff will stay above. Yeah. And yeah. We also have some more rocks um, and we can put these in the sand or the water. Cause obviously there's rocks in the sand or water. Um, also, sorry, no, you're fine. a variety of like measuring cups, which can also be used in both the sand and the water. Yeah. 
Um, we also have another sifter, but it's a little bit different. It's more like of a net, so probably not a lot more material. We'll go through it besides water. Um, and then we have this like scoop thing that's probably going to be good for like if they want to like collect something or like mold the sand into a ball. The nets are really good to keep for the children to like put the stuff on top of and the water or the sand will go through. Uh, we also have a fish net so that they can pick up all the stuff that's in the water and then they can look at it. Um, we also, so on the right, it's elevated so it's separate from the water and there's just sand. We have our little bucket where they can put rocks in it. Brooke's using the sifter so they can grab rocks and then sift the sand out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need those. Um, these things are also really cool because there's a light on them so they can look at whatever they pick up and then there's a little magnifying glass so they can see it up close. Yeah, and we have different measuring things such as that one and that helps with their mathematics skills and they can measure out different quantities. Um, there's pebbles and sea glass in here which is really cool and same in there we put those growing things which we talked about and then also different Sea glass, marbles, clear, um, marbles, yeah. And then Lauren's gonna explain that part. We also put sand and water in here just for like a different sensory. Um, and we realized if we put it in that, I feel like it would just like get all messed up. So we added a third bin. Um, this probably would be best to do outside just cause it probably will get messy with water. Um, but we like incorporated all different like rocks and pebbles and shells in all three bins just to like kind of incorporate them together. Um, we also put sand and water in here to show like the differences. Um, and like you can use like the light just to see like the differences and observe it. And then, I think that's, yeah, it. that's it. Oh, we also use this clear jar. So the shells that we bought, put them in a that kind of container and I feel like that's really good. To incorporate in the water section, they can fill it up and test volume. Yeah. So this is really cool because you can pick up the sand and then the it'll come out and then you'll be able to see just the shells or the pebbles or whatever you pick up. So I know this is, looks kind of chaotic uh, with all the materials, but we can take the sand out and have a bigger water pit if we need to. And then like all these materials will be more spread out. And then we can just put the sand one on the side, but we just figured it'd be better if they were like right next to each other. Even though it does make the container a little bit smaller. Okay, now we're going to talk about the importance of a sensory table. And so I'm going to talk about how it promotes social development, social skills, and creativity and imagination. So a lot of children are going to find these materials attractive. They like the water. They like the different textures of it. So I think that it really promotes them practicing sharing the materials and with these, they can have conversations. It sparks um, different conversations with them and they can talk and converse with each other about um, how to use it and different observations. And Brooke's gonna talk about how the teacher is probably gonna be more of a facilitator and not be as involved. And because the teacher is the facilitator, I feel like the students are more inclined to use their creativity and imagination. So sensory tables promote inquiry by exploring different materials. There's a lot of different materials in our bins, um, a lot of different textures, like Sydney said. Um, they also raise a lot of questions. I know with water, there's um, buoyancy involved. So like we put a ping pong bottle and there's other materials that don't float. So they can ask like why one floats, one doesn't. Um, certain things like um, the clear little bins, they talk or they you can talk about um, why the water goes to the bottom and the sand stays on the top. Okay, I meant to say sand's on the bottom, water's on top. Um, you can make observations about those things as well. Um, you can describe them. You can observations and raising questions go hand in hand. If you have a question, you can make observations to answer them or talk to a teacher about it. Do experiments. 
um, or even talk to your peers. Working collaboratively with like others is very important during a sensory table and um, promotes inquiry. And then also listening to new perspectives and like explanations from other children and teachers can also promote inquiry. So the sensory table also has lots of opportunities for like math and science concepts. So like as you can see with the mixture of the sand and the water, you can kind of see like density and how they separate because the sand is more dense than the water. Um, the measuring cups also allow for like more math because you can be like measuring the water and that kind of thing. And then there's also opportunities for like buoyancy with like the balls or like even the jar floats and like the marble sink so they're not buoyant and things like that. Okay. So <laughs> depending on how children decide to interact with the sensory table, it can align with a lot of the different theorists views. For example, Maria Montessori believes that learning and play should be child-led based on their own interests. And a sensory table is good because it's definitely something that a child can do and interact with on their own. But it can also be something where a teacher comes in and helps guide the, the learning. And that goes along with Vygotsky's theory on social constructivism. So we also found like a DAP statement that goes along with sensory tables and it's that children are active learners from birth and are constantly taking in and organizing information to create meaning through their relationships, interactions with the environment and their overall experiences. That's, that's <laughs> what about us. What did we find, bro? Marbles. Marbles. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm taking over. Um, I found this candle. No one has approved this idea. Well, it says it's going to smell like the beach, but it doesn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> vlog takeover. Over. Yeah. What's up, friends? So, we're leaving. Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. I don't know if it was Dollar Tree or Dollar General.